ice. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, you see. You can, you can go and get baptized in some church building and, uh, and, and confirmed. You can serve in church, wear a dog collar. You can do all kinds of religious duties, fasting and praying, visiting holy sites like Mecca and Lewis. You can do all that, my friends, but it's meaningless. It doesn't pay for any one of our sin. Oh, good. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't pay for any of your sin. So, see, there's a way that seems right to mankind, but the end is the way of death. You and I are so full of ourselves. Re literally, we are self-serving creatures. When we, until we acknowledge God and place Him on the throne of our life, we'll be on the throne of our lives. We'll decide what we do in life, who we sleep with, what we say, what we do, who we like, who we, do, who we don't like, who we love, who we don't love. We'll decide. You know, the, the Bible says that we're sin-loving creatures and we'll always make bad decisions until Jesus Christ is Lord of our life. And he must be Lord of your life in order for your soul to be saved. Until that happens, my friends, we'll make all kinds of crazy decisions. We'll do stupid things. Sin makes you stupid. Sin makes you stupid, my friends. It's not intelligent to live your life, this short existence, an enemy of God any longer. And you don't have to. Thankfully, God has provided a way for you to be changed, for you to be saved from the consequence of sin. What's the consequence of sin? The Bible tells us that if you die without Christ, if you don't know who he is, you'll die in your sins. You'll suffer in a place of unimaginable terror. A place of torment forever and ever. Everlasting torment. When you die, you don't just cease to exist and rot in the ground. That's a nice idea for people who have guilty consciences, who know that they're enemies of God and refuse to repent but if your soul dies and goes to hell my friends there's no joy in hell there's no party in hell there's no friends in hell all those things are gifts of God all those things joy, friendship peace, comfort they're all gifts of God you're enjoying the gifts of God in this short life while refusing to acknowledge his existence and the Bible tells us that your unbelief, your unbelief is what condemns you, my friends. Your unbelief is what condemns you, not who, with you, who you sleep with in the bedroom. Your unbelief, your lack of belief in what God has done on that cross when he killed his own son is what's going to condemn you on the day of judgment. And that's why the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. Saved, you see. You can be saved. It doesn't matter what you've gotten up to in life. It doesn't matter how wicked, nasty, sneaky you've been in life. And all the depraved things you've done. You can be forgiven. Totally, utterly forgiven. The slate wiped clean. <clears throat> and God will remember your sins no more. What a wonderful gift that is. Wouldn't you like to be forgiven today? You wouldn't? Why not? That's your greatest need, you know. I know people are chasing all kinds of things in life. Money, success, the praises of men, relationships, fun and amusement. People are chasing all kinds of uh, stuff in life. <clears throat> Hello, my friend. But what is it, what's it going to benefit you if you have everything you could possibly desire in life and die and stand before an angry God? Watch your, watch your mouth, my friend. You don't need to swear like that. Why are you so angry? What's Jesus going to do? Why are, you so, why are you so angry, my friend? Be careful. You might be going to hell. Yeah, don't, don't mock God, my friend. Don't mock God, my little friend. Where's he at when I'm fucking praying for him to keep us alive? Right? Why, why are you swearing? Why are you swearing, my deluded friend? You know that God exists. Everybody knows that God exists. I'm not here to convince you that God exists. Every human being that he created exactly. knows that he exists and knows that it's the God of the Bible because he's the only God who exists. There isn't any other. Jesus Christ is God, the creator of all things, and he made you with knowledge of himself. God made you. 
and you know of his existence. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He's provided for your every need so far. He's kept you safe so far. But there's coming a day, my friends. It's coming quickly. The axe is laid at the root of the tree. The wrath of God is coming. The judge is at the door. You don't know when God is going to take your life. You might live to old age like a queen. You might live that long. Most of us don't. But when God calls you to himself, follow Jim. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Good to see you. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's back, um, back Sunday, I think. So Jesus Christ is your only hope. There's no hope outside of Jesus Christ. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? God the Father killed his own son on that cross as a sacrifice for his people's sin. He died on that cross, suffered the wrath of Almighty God for his people. All those who God has chosen since the beginning of the foundation of the world. You see, it's God's heaven. It's God's heaven, my friends, and he decides who goes there. He'll have mercy upon whom he'll have mercy. Maybe he'll have mercy upon you today. Maybe if you're convicted of your sin. You, your conscience is speaking to you of all the wicked, sneaky, nasty things that you've done in life that God knows about. If God is shining light into your darkened heart and awakening you to your great need, God will have mercy on you if you call upon his name. All who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. It's inevitable. All who call upon him. Jesus Christ has never chased anyone away yet that's come to him. And it doesn't matter what depraved condition you're in. It doesn't matter how far you've gone from your creator. And your conscience tells you what you've done. I don't need to know what you've done. God has given light to every human being. You know it's wrong to lie and steal and commit adultery. You know it's long, wrong to commit murder. To dishonor your dad and mom. Honor your dad and mom, the Bible says. The Fifth commandment, have you always honored, respected your dad and mommy? Nobody's ever even kept that one. And God has given you a conscience, not to drag you to despair and leave you there, but to bring you to the end of yourself, to make you realize that you're not a good person, that you're an enemy of God, that you're wicked, vile, and you're in big trouble with a holy God on the day of judgment and he, he points you to Christ, he brings you to the end of yourself, that's what a Christian is, someone who's realized what they are in truth someone who comes to the end of themselves and then looks to Christ the only way that you can escape, Jesus said I'm the way he didn't say I'm one in many ways did he there can't be many ways to God, if there's many ways to God if there's many ways to heaven, then why did Jesus Christ die on that cross? He said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. And nobody, nobody comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. He's the only way that any human being can find forgiveness. The cross of Jesus Christ is your only hope today, my friends. Where is your hope? Are you trusting in your wealth? Are you trusting in your success in life? Are you trusting in all the nice things that you have in life, all the stuff in life, the relationships, the fun, the, the stuff, the material things in life? Where's your hope? Jesus said, what will it benefit anybody who gains the whole world and loses soul in hell? You can have it all. You could be the richest person in Carlisle. In Carlisle. <laughs> have about 50 quid or something. You could be rich, you could be wealthy like the queen. You're still going to die. She had it. She had more than us. We'll never attain to the wealth that she had. All the castles, all the servants, all the nice food and all the, all the money. She had it all. She had all the praises of men. Millions of people are mourning her death. But that won't help her in eternity, my friends. The Bible says, what shall you give in exchange for your soul? What are you living for? What are you living for, my friends? What is your attraction? Because the number one commandment is to love God. 
to love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, to love him above your wealth, to love him above your comforts, to love him above your relationships, however great those relationships are. You have to love him before them. You have to put him first. Love for God is going to determine where an individual spends eternity, my friends. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor hear, heard, nor the heart of man imagined. The heart of man hasn't imagined what God has laid up for all those who love him. Heaven is for all those who love God. You say, well, I don't love God. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my boyfriend, my girlfriend. I love my money. I love the fun in life. I love watching Netflix. That could be you. You've maybe never even considered the consequence of loving God. Why? How can I love God? How can I love God that I've never seen? You know God's real, my friend. Everybody knows God's real. There's nobody doesn't know that God's real. Every human being knows that God exists. And when you get an atheist, Mr. or Mrs. Atheist coming along, say, well, I don't believe in God. There's no such thing as God. All they're doing is suppressing the truth that God has given them. They're holding down the truth in unrighteousness. They love their sin. It's just an expression of how much they love their sin. You see, we're, we're God-hating people. We're not people who naturally love God. In order for you to love God, you need a heart change. You need God to supernaturally transform your very nature so that you stop living a selfish life and you live for Him instead. Where He, he saves you from the slavery to sin and the devil. You're either a slave to the devil and your sin. The devil says, jump and you ask how high. Yeah, I know. I know you do. I thought I was on point with that one. I'm human too. I know what it's like. But Jesus Christ can set you free. He whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. You can be set free from living a depraved, miserable life, enslaved to sin and the devil, and you can become a child of God. You say, well, everybody's a child of God. No. A lot of you need to receive Christ before you can become a child of God. Everybody's born an enemy of God. You're a child of the devil if you're not a child of God. No, no. The whole of humanity aren't children of God. They're created by God. But the Bible says, to as many as received him, as many as received Jesus Christ by faith, he gave them the right to become children of God. God will adopt you into his family give you hope and peace and joy and make you a Christian. But it's God's work. You see, I can't persuade you. I can't persuade you anything, my friends. I can't. If I could persuade you to become a Christian, then someone else could come along later and persuade you to be a Muslim or a Hindu. You need God's almighty power. Because what God does, he does, does forever. It's... It, it, you see, if God saves you, if God puts you in your right mind today and he changes your heart and nature, you can't go back. There's no going back. If you become a Christian today, there's no going back, my friends. The Bible tells us that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. If you become a Christian, you're a Christian today and forever. You must be born again, you see. You must be born again. You need a, a spiritual birth. You need God to take away your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. A heart that loves God. The God of the Bible. The only God who exists. There isn't any other God. You need God to take away your cold, stony heart that loves sin and hates God. And gives you a heart of flesh. A heart that loves Him. A heart that has His desires. Not your desires. A heart that hates sin. And if that's never happened to you, my friends, you're not a Christian. If you've never had an experience where God has changed your very nature so that now you love God and hate your sin, then you're not a Christian. You say, well, I go to church. I go to church. Yeah, you might go to church, but you're not a Christian, my friend. You're just a pew warmer. You must be born again. 
Born of God. See, it's God's work making Christians. I can't make you a Christian. You can't make yourself a Christian. But what is impossible with men is possible with God. He can put you in your right mind. He can save you from the, the terrors of hell. He can save you from your sin. He whom the Son sets free will be free indeed so that you live a life pleasing to Him. And that you don't meet Him as an angry judge, you meet Him as your Father. That's good news, right? That there's salvation on offer. That you can be saved from now and forever and spend an eternity. Because this lifetime's only short, isn't it? It's only a little while till we enter into eternity, till we set foot into eternity. We are eternal beings. We're going to spend forever somewhere. God has created us that way. And when you stand before God, all that will matter on that day it's not how much money you've had in life, how successful or popular you were, how many friends you had, how many relationships you had. All that will matter, my friends, is are your sins covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? Are you forgiven? Your greatest need today and every day that God lends you breath is forgiveness. You need your sins forgiven before, you, before God takes your life and you stand before him. And they can only be forgiven at the cross of Jesus Christ. If you look to the cross of Jesus Christ by faith and believe that what Jesus Christ did on that cross, that he bled in agony on that cross for your sin and you trust fully in what he did on that cross was for you and you put your trust there and stop trusting in the stuff in this world and your own nice personality and nice behavior, it's going to be a lot of nice people end up in hell, my friends. Because they've rejected the truth. You're condemned already because you don't believe in what God has done on that cross. See, when Jesus Christ, that sinless, the only sinless person to ever walk the face of this planet, the sinless God became a sinless human being. He lived a sinless life unlike you and me. He's the only good person to ever walk the face of this planet. The rest of us, we're just enemies of God under his wrath condemned because of our lack of belief when he went to that cross he said nobody takes my life Jesus Christ said this he said nobody takes my life Jesus Christ said this is God in flesh your creator the one who lends you breath nobody takes my life I lay it down freely and I have power to take it up again he suffered the vengeance of almighty God on that cross the wrath of God in his people's place. So that now for every Christian. The wrath of God. Is already poured out upon Jesus Christ. And won't be poured out upon you. In eternity. That's good news. That God has provided a way. For you to be forgiven. Fully. Completely. Utterly forgiven. Accepted. In spite of all your sin. But that's the only way. You can't get there through Muhammad. Or Buddha. Or the Roman Catholic religion. It's already done. God isn't requiring you to become a religious person. He's requiring you to look to his son. And believe in what he did on that cross. On the back of your... Back of your yeah, no. Well, oh, you want to <laughs> and so he suffered the wrath, the vengeance of almighty God in his people's place on that cross. So they don't have to. That's good news. You don't have to stand before an angry God. A God who knows your heart. He knows everything about you, my friends. What you've done in secret, in the dark, will be brought into the light on that terrible day, my friends. When you stand before God, there'll be no excuse. Claiming to be born that way won't be an adequate excuse. Following the science, believing the ridiculous lie of the Big Bang and the theory of evolution, that won't be an adequate excuse, my friends. There will be no excuse. Nobody will stand before God on the day of judgment and say, well, I, what do you know? I didn't know you existed. I followed the science. I listened to what David Attenborough said, that we evolved from pond life over millions and millions of years. I thought my life was just an accident. There's no excuse, my friends. God's invisible attributes are clearly seen through creation. Creation testifies of his handiwork. 
It doesn't testify of a big bang. The big bang insults your intelligence, but that shows you the wickedness, the corruption of our heart. We'd rather believe that ridiculous lie that the universe somehow miraculously created itself from nothing, rather than believe in God, the creator of all things. A fool says in his heart there is no God. It's not a wise thing to deny God's existence. And it's only the God of the Bible. There isn't any other God. The good news is today that you don't have to do anything to earn heaven. You don't have to do anything to earn your place in heaven. You can't. No amount of good works, religious deeds can pay for any one of your sin. It's all done on the cross. Jesus Christ said, it's finished. Paid in full, he did it all. And that's why your best efforts, you're turning over a new leaf, going to church and tipping the hat to him at Christmas and Easter. That's why that can't help you, my friends. It's meaningless. <coughs> Fasting and praying. You can pray to your God 55 times a day, but your sin remains. Fasting, visiting holy sites like Lewis and Mecca, you can't pay for any of your sin. You can't please God with your good deeds. Your good deeds and your righteous acts are like filthy, stinking rags to God. Because the only work that God will accept as payment for your sin is what Jesus Christ did on that cross. He did it all. He said it's finished, paid in full bowed his head, was buried. Three days later, Jesus Christ defeated death, just like he said he would. <coughs> All right, Maria. And he, he resurrected himself from the grave. The grave couldn't keep Jesus Christ. Death couldn't hold him. This is God, your creator in flesh. Buried. Three days later, resurrected and seen by over 500 people. Over 500 Eyewitnesses saw Jesus Christ after he'd been cruelly beaten to a pulp and nailed to that cross in the place of his people. And over 500 people saw him resurrected, brought back from the grave. No other religious leader has ever done that, have they? <laughs> Muhammad's in the grave, his body's, you could probably go and visit his bones somewhere. Muhammad's dead, he was, he was just a human being, Muhammad wasn't God. Muhammad didn't defeat death. Muhammad died. God, Jesus Christ, took Muhammad's life. What's that? Yeah, God killed his son. That's why, that's why your unbelief is such a terrible thing, my friend. No, God doesn't sin. God doesn't sin. God provided a sacrifice that he requires. God himself died on that cross. God himself took the punishment that you and I deserve, a people like you and I. God doesn't sin. God's without sin. God, God can't sin. There's some things God can't do. He can't lie. He can't sin. He can't be unfaithful. <clears throat> he crushed his son as a sacrifice for his people. He provided the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world forever. See, somebody has to die. Somebody has to die. It's like this. If you go to court, you get caught for some crime. Uh, no. And you end up in court. And the judge says to you, look, you're guilty. It's obvious you're guilty. You've been caught red-handed. You've got to pay a huge fine. You've got to pay a fine that you can't afford. Imagine if that... I don't know it's hypothetical. But supposing that was to happen, you end up in court and you've got to pay a huge fine. And you don't have the money. And just before... The judge says, well, you've got to go away for a long time if you don't have the money. Have Somebody you don't even know steps into court and says, I'll pay their fine. Here's the money. Well, the judge can let you go free. And that's what Jesus Christ did on that cross, my friends. He died for his people's sin, for all those who God has loved before the foundation of the world, before he created anything. He set his love upon a particular people. I'll talk to you if you talk sense. If you're just going to mock. I'm not going to give you any time. Yeah, Jesus, Je 
Jesus Christ is your only hope today, my friends. It's good news on offer today. The gospel is good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And when your end comes, when your appointment with God comes, and it's coming fast, nobody out here is getting any younger, are they? We're all moving forward to our appointment with God. It's fixed already. Your day of death is fixed already by Almighty God and nothing's going to change it. No nuclear war is going to take you any earlier than your appointed time. No virus, COVID, or monkeypox. No, no virus can take you any earlier than your appointed time. Your day of death, like mine, is fixed already. God does all things well. He's in the heavens doing all that he pleases. And when he created everything, he didn't walk away and leave it to exist apart from his sovereign hand. He has a purpose for everything, you see. Even the raindrops that fall from that sky, they all have their appointed target. Everything works out perfectly according to his good pleasure. Hello, Richard. Are you well? That's good. Good to hear. It's good to hear, my friend. Still dead to the world. Are you trusting Jesus? Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. It's still dead to the world, isn't it? It's coming. The end of the world's coming. This world is going to get burned up. The Bible says it's already written. When God speaks, he does what he says. He never changes his mind, my friends. And you can't save the planet by being a unhealthy vegan. You can't save the planet through recycling your rubbish. And driving an electric car, the world's going to get destroyed soon. God's already spoken. If you believe in Jesus, if you trust in him and obey him as Lord. You see, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Keep his commandments. Are you keeping Jesus' commandments? You know, some of you say, well, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, the devil. The devil believes in Jesus. The devil knows that Jesus exists. You need something other than a head knowledge. You need something other than just a head knowledge. And just a belief in Jesus. You need to trust him as your Lord. The Lord of your life. Give him the reins of your life. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the one who should be worshipped, honoured, loved. And obeyed. And if you're not living for him, you're still living for yourself. That's not a good place to be. That's not a safe place to be. God didn't create you to live for yourself. God didn't give you life so that you live your life pleasing self. You're not your own property, you see. The Bible tells us, I could show you where it says it if you don't believe me, but it, it tells us that Jesus Christ created everything and everything was created for him you're part of that everything you see you're part of God's creation you're not the creator you're a created being who's got a very short life and you're living your life under the rule of God whether you acknowledge it or not and so the meaning of life the reason what's that what was that I'm preaching it, dear. I'm preaching it. I'm pleased you like to hear it. I'm pleased that some people out here appreciate good news when they hear it. She's being sarcastic. You didn't get it. I don't think she is being sarcastic. I think she's a Christian. She is being sarcastic. I can't believe Yeah, I told you so. She likes to hear good news. No, she doesn't. She does. I can tell. She loves good news when she hears it. There's a lot of bad news out there, isn't there? But the good news is today that you can have hope. When you look to that cross... And see Jesus Christ bleeding in agony on that cross for you. Believe by faith that he died for you. That's salvation, my friends. That's the way to heaven. That's the way to peace with God. Your greatest need. You see, your greatest need isn't peace in this lifetime, this short existence. Your greatest fear isn't Putin. Putin isn't your greatest fear. 
A financial crisis isn't your greatest fear. Financial stability and all the stuff in life isn't the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life is to live for your God. The one who knit you together in your mother's womb, formed your inward parts and brought you forth from your mother's womb. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, you see. You're a wonderful part of God's creation. You're the pinnacle of his creation. You're made in the image and likeness of God. Animals aren't. Angels, they aren't. Angels that surround the throne of God and cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of your his glory. That's good. That's good, my friend. That's good. Because I'm a human being. Angels aren't created in the image and likeness of God, but you are. You're the very pinnacle of God's creation, and you should live for Him, you see. And until you live for Him and surrender, wave the white flag, and come and live your, the rest of your days under His rule, you'll have no hope. 